Hey guys, do you ever have a problem so perplexing that you need to put everything you have into solving that issue? Um, and that was me this week. I have spent all my free time trying to solve this issue. It's kind of minor, but it just bugged me so much that I needed to get into it. I've got a couple of solutions that I'm going to show you and it's going to be up to you guys to sort of tell me which ones you think are best or provide your own down below in the comments. So let's get into it. At the start of the week, I was meant to be working on my UI. I was sort of going through that, adding sound, adding certain elements to my game that would just help me design it a bit better. Um, but I noticed this issue where you were able to uh, run up walls, unless your wall is perfectly vertical. And I mean that like it has to be 90 degrees. You can essentially just clear it, no problems. And I found that to be incredibly irritating and I needed to put everything I had into it. I've been considering putting in uh, wall running into my shooter and if I want to do wall running, I need to solve this problem because I need to be able to control and define when a player can and can't walk up a wall that's 80 degrees. It's like straight up. I don't know why this is possible. Um, actually, I do. And I'm going to explain to you in a second. So move and slide. It's the function that we all know with Godot. Um, it's the one that we use to propel our kinematic bodies forward. But there's a major issue with it. And I mean, I say major, it's just a part of how it works with collisions. So when you're moving up a slope, the X and Z velocities are not reset automatically. So when you're pushing against a slope, the player is pushed upwards because of the way the collision system works. And because of this, you're able to clear walls that are way steeper than what you've specified as the max slope in your move and slide. You see, there's a bunch of parameters in the move and slide function that you might not be aware of, or you might not be using. Most of the time you're fitting in uh, linear velocity and up so that you can tell if you're on the floor, so you can use your jump, you know, just probably those two. And then there's a couple of others and you've got stop on slope, max slides, max angle, and infinite inertia. Now, some of those are really handy. I find the max angle to be one that you can use, in my case, to define what is a wall and what is a floor. And in theory, you probably shouldn't be able to walk up a wall, um, but turns out you can. Um, so, when I was Googling, most of the solutions I was finding are people talking about move and slide with snap. And that's pretty much exactly the same as move and slide, except there's a vector three, which is a snap. And it's, you just needed to find a vector that the player is going to snap to. So that's normally like up and it works with the floor max angle. And so if you're below that floor max angle, so say 45 degrees, your player character isn't going to bounce on those slopes, like you've seen in some of the videos that I'm playing, it's gonna to stick to them, which is gonna feel a lot more natural when you're moving your character around. But once again, it doesn't stop you from being able to walk up an 80 degree cliff and just clear it, no problems. Um, that requires a lot more work as I'm going to show you now. So I've got move and slide with snap set up in my project. And you know, I'm, I'm passing in a variable, which is the max floor angle. And for my project, I've just got that set to 45 degrees. Um, and I'm using degrees and I'm just converting it in the uh, actual function itself. So, you know, that's sort of where I got to it. Uh, it doesn't solve this problem. It'll stop you from sliding and um, you might not have noticed, but essentially when you walk up these, you sort of got like a little bit of a boost as well. You know, you see you fly up and over. Basically what move and slide with snap does is it stops that from happening. It holds you to the ground. If you try to jump or try to use your jump function with this move and slide with snap, uh, you won't be able to jump because the, the function literally holds the kinematic body to the ground. Um, that's what it's supposed to do. It's perfectly normal. You just have to disable that when you try to jump. Okay. So that's sort of, you know, what you'll find as a solution online, but it doesn't help me when I want to place a wall that isn't perfectly 90 degrees and you can just jump right over it. Just a little heads up before we get into it, you'll see a lot of owner.isonwall wall or owner velocity. Um, I'm using a, um, a node-based finite state machine, which means I'm not always calling these functions directly on the kinematic body. I have to use owner in order to get to the kinematic body because these are like on nodes down here. That's why you're seeing a lot of that. Um, 
if you're just working on a kinematic body, you just have to take those out. So the first thing that I did was velocity y is equal to zero if you're on a wall. Also, if the kinematic body isn't on a wall, um, velocity y is either zero or falling, right? That's okay. So that's what we want. Now this works pretty well, except when you jump, you go flying. So, you know, like it alleviates some of the issues. Obviously with the jump, you'd need to find some other kind of solution. So the next thing I did was actually try locking off the Y axis, knowing that wasn't always gonna work. Um, there's a lot of potential here for a solid solution, um, but there were still some things that were a bit jank. Uh, so let's walk through that idea. Now, this will 100% of the time work. There's no questions about it. If it detects any kind of wall, it's gonna lock that axis. So you'll see that even on a 48 degree wall, over that 45 degree angle, the one that I've set to be floor in move and slide, uh, then there's no way that you can go up at this floor here is actually 45 degrees and you can see me move up at no problem. So. You know, this works really well. There's no weirdness when you're walking against it. Um, the only issue is when you're trying to jump, you have to do a lot to get around it. I was able to work something out. This is the Raycast. Essentially what this does is that when the player is inputting directions, it's gonna turn to the direction of the input. And if it detects anything, it's gonna report back and say, hey, there's a wall there, stop moving. And if there isn't, uh, we're gonna set the axis lock to false. By the way, set axis lock takes an enumerator. Number two is the Y axis. So now I can't like continuously jump up the wall. I'll still go for a little bit and I believe that is because I've got a little bit of a delay timer on the wall ray cast. So half a second, it's actually going to be false. It gets set false at the start of the uh, state. This is the enter function that I use for my state. Uh, it gets set to false and then there's a 0.5 second timeout and then when it timed out and we're still in the jump state, we're going to set it to true. So this uh, gives you a little bit of leeway so you don't automatically uh, hit the, any kind of wall that you're trying to jump over. Like if it's a little bit of a ledge, that that raycast is going to be a bit of an issue. So yeah, I mean, it, it works pretty well. The forward and back, that's the thing I don't like about this, is you can still walk up and down a slope like this, no problems. You can't really move up it. You, I mean, it's hard. Like you sort of angle your camera the right way, you'll be able to, but that pretty much solves the issue. So if you're not looking to do anything else, I mean, I still got up this wall. It's hard, but if it's not that important to you, I actually quite like this solution because there's not really that much to it. And there's no like weird pushback from any input triggers that you're trying to pull, which I'll show you next. Okay, so this is the uh, sort of third solution, third and fourth. It's two solutions in one that sort of, I feel gives me the most control and sort of the best response. Um, I'm still using that Raycast that I showed you guys earlier. Um, I'm using this function called wall check and instead of calling it in the state, I'm actually calling it in the class for motion and I'm putting it in the input direction function, pointing that raycast anywhere the player's input is pointing. And when it does collide with something, it gets the collision normal and compares it against the vector3.up. I've got that saved as a constant as just up, so I can just type it in rather than have to write vector3.up, I'm lazy. And then I'm checking that against the max floor angle. As long as it's above 45 degrees, I am subtracting that direction from the input direction and it'll just cancel out that position. And so you can never push against anything that's over that angle. Um, and so that's really good. Um, I've had great results with this. It's very similar to the other one, except I'm not locking accesses, which is a bit finicky. If you forget to unlock it, um, it's a problem. I had issues where I was able to walk uh, just off a wall and you're just not falling as long as you're continuing to do certain things. So there are a lot more bugs that I had to solve in order to sort of use that solution. And I didn't really like that, even though I think it's a pretty good option um, if you're sort of like trying to solve this on a simpler project. Um, so this is the two parts of this solution. The first is the Raycast and that is basically doing the bulk of the work. So if I do this now, I've disabled that other section, which I'll explain to you after this, you'll see that it's stopping the movement. And like I said before, this is sort of like pushback if it's steep enough, because basically the, the opposite of the input is pushing you away. 
but that's okay. It's not that bad. And you can't, you essentially can't walk up the wall. You just fall slowly, but you'll fall. The one thing that I found with this is that you can walk left and right, very similar to the other solution with the set axis lock. You can just basically walk up and you can, you can get up these walls if you sort of really try. There you go. I can get to this one. Come on. There we go. Okay. So you can still get up the wall, um, which bothered me a lot because I just, I just couldn't leave this alone until I completely prevented the player from being able to, to traverse walls greater than what I said. Um, so what did I do? The get slide count, which is built into Godot's kinematic body. Um, and so basically the kinematic body, you can get every single collision that's happening at every single moment that it's calling that move and slide function. Um, and this is really powerful because you don't have to get a ray cast or you don't check if it's on a wall. You can just check if the angle is uh, greater than what you've decided and then perform a function on it. So you don't have to worry about if it's on wall or if it's not a wall. I just called this and I'm basically just looping through the slide count and I'm checking the collision. I'm just checking that the dot product or the angle of the slope is greater than the angle that I've specified. And I'm doing the exact same calculation. I'm returning the exact same thing. Now, you might think, why am I not just doing this instead of using a ray cast? And the answer to that is that this solution is pretty bad on its own um, because of that same issue where if you're coming against a wall and it's pushing you slightly up, uh, slightly across and then up because of that, what this is going to do is going to miss those collisions and you're going to return, because I have to return something here, a, zero, a vector 3.0 and... Um, you'll be able to still go up the wall and that's not desired either. So these two in combination are really good. I'll disable this section of it um, and you'll see what I'm talking about. So this is just on its own and you can see sort of like bouncing up and down and, and bouncing down and it's, it's really bad. Um, and there's ways that you can solve this. You can increase the max floor angle to be really high. Um, not, and that's not in this calculation, that's in your move and slide calculation. You change this to like 90 and you disable this floor check and it's going to work incredibly consistently. The only issue is you'll be able to bunny hop up the wall, um, which is okay. You know, it's, you see that a lot in games and there's obviously a lot of issues around that. You'd have to do something else for checking the jump. It's a whole thing. And so you know, this solution, it's okay. It's not the best. You can see it sort of works um, just on its own, even with a smaller snap. There's still there's still some issues around it. It's, it's just not the best solution. And so you combine it with this and it works really well. And so this to me is like the most good solution because you're always being pushed down. It's a bit jank with the, the downwards push. The reason I do do this is because it will push the player down faster. And so that's helpful because I've noticed that even with all these solutions, the downward sliding on a wall is pretty slow, especially on ones that aren't as steep. Um, so, you know, this just gives you a little bit of an extra push in the right direction because we don't want our player to be on a wall, but it, it works. Well, that's all I can say. It's it's a pretty decent solution. So I'll leave that on screen for a little bit longer. That's essentially what I'm doing. There is some uh, bounce back with my solution. It's kind of mim minimal. It's minimal and I don't really think it's that big a deal because anyone that's directly pushing against a wall and trying to get up it, um, they're already trying to break the game. So, you know, they're expecting to see some bug. You know, you've all seen the videos of uh, someone um, dive rolling up a hill in Skyrim, all that kind of weird stuff. So, you know, people expect to find bugs when they're trying to break the game. So that's, I'm going to leave that in for now. Um, so this sort of gives you a lot of control when you're designing your levels, especially if you want to do something like wall jumping, because you don't want to, you know, put up a couple of platforms that you only want the player to be able to wall jump on, but they can just walk straight over or, you know, something like that. There's a whole 
slew of reasons why you might not want your player to be able to walk up an 80 degree wall. Um, and so this is just one of those ways that you've got to try and solve this issue in the Godot game engine at the moment. There isn't anything quick. So probably for the first time since I've actively started using the Godot engine, I actually turn to the community. Um, I don't really ask a lot of questions online, um, mostly because people have already asked them for me. If I'm trying to figure something out, you can Google it and there's a solution basically for everything. Godot is really good like that. Um, now I've done something a little bit differently, but this is sort of what gave gave me enough of an idea about how to solve this issue sort of got me thinking and this is where it's helpful you don't necessarily need to get the best solution from you know a subreddit or some help forum but it can also help you start thinking about different kinds of ways to solve a solution uh, to solve a problem I should say um, I haven't taken a look at any of the FPS controllers people have linked to me I'm sure there's better solutions but I'm just showing you mine um, in the, in the hopes that, you know, some smart asses in the comments will be telling me exactly how this is done. And I'm an idiot, which is exactly what I want. So if you do have like a really good solution for, um, preventing a player from going up a, a an 80 degree cliff, then I'd love to hear about it. Um, otherwise all my links are in, in the description. Um, and I'll see you guys next time.